Hi booktube, I'm here with another currently reading. Uh, I'm wearing just a Star Wars shirt and I found this thrifting the other day and I'm calling it my Pokemon jacket. I feel like a trainer just because the colors are with the Pokeball. So um, yeah, just showing off clothes. How much did I pay for that? I think I paid 10 bucks for this, so good price. And it fits. Um, yeah, not here to talk about clothes though, um, but let's talk about um, already breaking one of my, uh, 2024 goals with reason, with very good reason, very good reason. So the first book, I was, if you don't know, I was planning on only buying one book each month uh, in 2024. I forgot to say that there would be an exception, um, and that exception is Canada Reads. Um, so I went in. We're only on the 13th. So last week I went to the bookstore and I picked up this book, um, The Winter Night by Jess Batiste, or Batis, something like that. And uh, this was on the Canada Reads long list. And I looked at the plot and I'm like, that actually sounds really interesting. I want to read that. And I'm going to take the bet that this will be on the short list. I was wrong in that bet, but I'm really interested in reading this book anyways. Um, so this is about the Knights of the Round Table reincarnated, I guess. Um, in Vancouver, and uh, we follow. Oh yeah, so um, Wayne is an autistic college student, and the reincarnation of Sir Gawain. Ga 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 Gawain. Sure, I I can say it right in my head. The tongue just doesn't want to cooperate. Um, so yeah, we have um, Hildy of Valkyrie. So they're kind of incorporating many different legends here, and the investigator assigned to a case uh, when one of the Knights of the Round Table ends up dead. So it's like. Fancy mystery sounds kind of cool. Um, so there's that one, and then the shortlist was released on the 13th, 11th. Today's the 13th on the 11th, um, and my local bookstore had two of the books. Now, yes, I did buy this one new. I'm gonna give it a chance. I'm not a big. I'm not a fan of romance at all. This is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. They try to hide it as not romance, but it is. It is very clearly romance, um, but I had the same reaction to Mexican Gothic. Not that it wasn't like if I was like I don't really want to read this kind of like YA, you know, kind of book. I thought that's what it was going to be, and I was wrong. Mexican Gothic is one of my favorite books from last year, um, so I'm going to give it a chance. But chances are I probably won't like this one. Uh, so this is Meet Me at the Lake. Uh, we follow Fern, and she spent too much of her adult life thinking about Will Baxter, and I mean, I was just like. But we'll give it a try. Um, this, I've been wanting to read uh, Jessica Johns for a while. Um, and so this is Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. And this is, I don't know what it's about. I read it and I was just like, something about crows, I think. She accidentally brings back items from her dreams. Dreams that are similar to real memories of her sister in the before their untimely deaths. Cool. It's supposed to be like a horror. And it's shiny. And then, okay, I wasn't supposed to buy any used books. But, but, let me tell you. I spent the equivalent price of a new book on this book. Um, and I looked it up and it was priced actually decently. It was $25 at the thrift store. And normally when I see a book like that, I'm just like, uh, no, why would you do that? Um, but I looked it up on this website I use called Book Finder. Which finds like really kind of obscure books for you. And the cheapest price for that was like 60 some odd dollars. I was just like, I really want to learn more about this topic. Um, so I'm going to spend the $25 on it. This is Both Sides of the Wire by Ted Jones. And this is about uh, internment camps during World War II um, set up in Fredericton. Um, now I knew about the Ukrainian and the Japanese internment camps set up in Canada. Um, and this is a mostly European um, um, refugees and prisoners of war. Um, and Canadian suspects were detained at Ripples, New Brunswick, under the C Canadian Provost Corps and the Veterans Guard of Canada. Um, so yeah, it's about uh, people who are fleeing the Nazis <laughs> coming over here and being um, pit into camps over here. Um, thankfully, they weren't, you know, they weren't death camps. Um, the conditions weren't great, and people died because of it anyways, but like, it, but... I'm not saying it's better. They sh they shouldn't have been done, but I'm not. They're not. They're not uh, concentration camps, um, but they're still pretty pretty bad. 
Okay, so that's what I bought recently. Um, what I've been listening to recently, I'm going to start with the audiobook because it's there on the top of my head. Um, and I didn't plan on reading this book, but I had a big task of uh, reorganizing my closet and cleaning it. And so I decided to put on an audiobook. I didn't actually finish the audiobook, but I got a good chunk into it. And that is book three, four, book four, I think it is now, of The Wayward Children's In an Absent Dream, uh, where we follow the character of Lundy. Um, so this is like a prequel. So Lundy is a character that we meet in the first book. Um, she's a therapist, and we learn in the first book that she is aging backwards. So it's kind of like the story how she ends up there. Um, so her world is very logical and rule oriented. Um, it's very interesting because you can't, you have to be careful about the questions you ask because if you, if it seems like you're asking for something, um, that could take value away from, um, you and, um, so like people get, like lose parts of themselves, um, by asking questions in the wrong way and not having anything of value to trade for that. Um, so yeah. Um, so she's in the goblin market dealing with that. And it's interesting because in her story, she can go back and forth, whereas most children, they can go um, into the world and out of the world, but they can't necessarily go back into the world. But with the goblin market, you can. So that's that. Um, so I'm still listening to that. I decided to DNF the comic I was reading um, called The Batman Who Laughs. It had a really interesting premise, but it wanted me to suspend my disbelief far too much. Um... There were ways that I was just like, how are they, how do they know this stuff? Like, you know, I, I, I don't know if I was missing, like, from reading certain volumes that they knew this stuff already. Like, the uh, alternate universe Batman's coming through, like Bruce Wayne's. Um, and I was just like, well, how do they know that? Like, how do they, like, hypothesis? And they were just coming up with these things and I was just like, that doesn't make sense without some pre-knowledge here. Um, and it happened one too many times that I was just like, I don't, I don't want to put up with a story like that. Um, so yeah, I DNF'd that comic. I'm still reading, <laughs> uh, some books that I was reading at the beginning of the month, but I'm planning on finishing Rosewater today, if at all, at all possible. There's like 120 pages left in here. It is really good. I'm really caught up in the story. This is definitely, <laughs> I'm glad I picked it up. Definitely, um... As long as nothing drastic happens, well, I'm sure something drastic will happen um, plot-wise and character-wise, maybe in the next 120 pages, but as long as nothing changes, like, with the writing, um, this is going to be a five-star book for me, <laughs> for sure. It is really good. Um, yeah, we're following, um, as I talk about, see, it's all in first person, so we don't get his first name a lot, so it hasn't stuck in my head, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce it. It's K-A-A-R-O, so, uh, Caro is what I'm going to say, um. We follow Caro. It says name on the back. Could have just read that. Um, anyways, Caro, um, he's a psychic um, who was made a psychic by this giant alien biodome that has landed in Ni Nigeria. Um, it's causing all sorts of things, and psychics are dying off, and we're getting his story and him kind of investigating that. And it's really interesting because we're jumping around a lot in time. And it, it is slightly frustrating because a chapter will end on a cliffhanger and you're in like 2055 and then the next chapter is like 2066. And I'm just like, I want to know what happened at the end of that one. Um, but it's interesting. I love when when that is done like right in books. Um, and I feel like it's done right in here because you're getting enough um, books. Um, just... Okay, sorry. I had to pause the video. So I think I was just wrapping up talking about this that I think it's really well done. Um, being told in a non-linear fashion because um, like the character the amount of characters is nice and small um, so you're getting hints of like stuff that happened in the past and happened in the future and you can see the links between uh, the different events and stuff okay. um, I think this book is suffering uh, compared to this book um, it's a different story and if I'd read it at a different time I probably would have been more intrigued by it right but uh, right now it's very heavy on the politics and the character um, whereas this one is, has like a lot of action. So like, I want to read the book with more action right now, but this is good. This is good. Don't get me wrong. This is very good. Um, it's just that I've been drawn more to action as opposed to, um, character right now. Um, so yeah, um, not very far into this, but I'm looking forward to, uh, going back into this heavily, um, once I finish this book today. Um, and I picked up another book because 
that's what I'm doing. I'm feeling like I'm forgetting a bunch of books and it's already halfway through the month and I've got to read, catch up on some stuff. Um, and my bookmark is kind of backwards there. I got this cute bookmark at a uh, craft sale. It says Cat Lover and that looks the same coloring as my cat. Anyways, um, so this is Caucasia by Danzi Sensa Senna. And uh, this is very beautifully written. I'm only 30 pages in. Um, and it's about two sisters of bi sisters are biracial, um, but one is more white passing and one is not. Um, so it's, it um, harkens to passing. I believe uh, Danzi had wrote, written her um, one of her like university thesis theses. I tried. I don't know. Again, the tongue doesn't want to cooperate. The one of her essays <laughs> was about uh, passing by. Uh, Larson, Nella Larson. So it's interesting to see uh, some of that come into play here. But it's um, it's a, sisters as opposed to um, as opposed to uh, just I think they were just friends. Were they related? I can't remember. Um, but it's really cool because her sister and her um, she talks about how um, before she you know was aware of um, her own body, she used her sister as a reflection of herself. Um, and like she didn't realize that how different she looked um and her parents were only 30 pages in so this is not spoilers i think her parents are involved in the black power movement but in different ways um so it takes place in the late 60s early 70s i believe um so like her mom is leaning towards a more um, militant aspect whereas her father is more um the intellectual side of it um so it's interesting to see that too and the arguments it's causing and the relationship again with her sister is really cool because they've made up their own language and you see some of it in here um and you know communicating and stuff like that with their sister like that so yeah really cool really beautiful writing just um i'll just read the beginning um oh and this is before i ever saw myself i saw my sister when i was still too small for mirrors i saw her as a reflection that proved my own existence Back then, I was content to see only Cole, three years older than me, and imagine that her face, cinnamon skin, curly hair, serious, was my own. It was her face above me always, waving toys at me, cooing at me, whispering to me, pinching me when she was angry, and I was the easiest target. That face was me, and I was that face, and that was how the story went. Um, so just very well done. I don't know what else I talked about um, last week. I finished volume two of um, Dinosaur Sanctuary. Um, thankfully this didn't end on much of a cliffhanger um but you know the the sanctuary is still um in trouble uh, financially um so hopefully we get that tied up um and i read patience by daniel cloves i have a feeling i talked about this i don't know if i did so i'm gonna talk about it again because i can't remember when i finished it um yeah this is about a man who's uh, wife, um, his pregnant wife gets killed, murdered, and he finds a way to go back in time, and, uh, he then gets caught up in this, um, idea of whether he's going to, um, revenge, um, the killing, um, after it's happened, or try and stop it from happening, um, he doesn't know what he wants more, at, um, at that point, it's really quite interesting, um, story, yeah a lot with the time paradox and i feel like i've said that before so i probably have talked about this book um yes i think that is it reading wise i feel again like i'm not reading enough um but when i look at it like i am um it's just things aren't going as fast as i'd like them to go um i guess that's what happens when you pick a lot of books that are <laughs> not plot based that are more character um and idea based um, so yeah, that is it. It's the second week of January now, almost wrapped up. That's crazy. We're living in the future. We're living in 2024. And that's still, like, is almost mind-boggling to me. Um, so that is it for this video. Let me know what you've read this week. If you're facing the same problem of, like, being stuck on the same books for a long period of time. And thanks for watching.